And, you know, um, I'd always say, you know, when I'd study Mormonism before the Church of God was even around, I'd say, you know, there's a mountain of evidence for the person wanting to find God, you know, against Mormonism to show all the problem areas in Mormonism. Well, you know, the more people have dug in, there's a ton of things. Nobody's without an excuse, without the ability, if you got the internet, to really look and to, you know, really search for the truth. Um, and I, I tell people, you know, truth, you know, when you're looking for truth, you know, the only thing that, you know, fears the truth is error and darkness runs from light. Right. In that. right. Um, you know, beside going to the Bible, a lot of people will just, just believe this and they really got to look at both sides. I heard a saying once, like, you know, if you're going to look to buy a Ford car, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to go and buy, you know, talk to, you know, Ford salesmen from dealerships. They're just going to tell you it's the best car ever made. Right. Um, they're not going to, you know, if you want to know, you got to read consumer reports, talk to Ford drivers, talk to mechanics. You're going to hear both sides of the story. And, you know, it's, I think it's really critical that when someone comes and tells you that there's an elderly lady who lives in South Korea who created the universe, you know, it's really good before you commit your soul, your future, your money, your time, everything. It's really good to look at the other side and, you know, don't be right. scared of using the Internet. You know, why, why would you not? You know, Jesus said, shut it from the rooftops. You know, don't be scared of a, a, a tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is just it's ridiculous. It's a way to entrap people. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That that should go without saying that if you have a group telling you that an elderly woman in South Korea created the universe, it seems like not a, a terrible thing to do to do a little bit of searching on the internet behind these groups that are saying this to see, is there any validity to this before I well, I'll, one thing to one thing to yeah, point out, though, is that they don't tell you about that elderly Korean woman until you're already, you know, indoctrinated yes. into the church and you've already been in most cases, you've already been baptized. <laughs> yeah, people have heard of, you know, that the church believes in God, the mother. But it's not until like a couple of weeks after they're baptized that they know that, OK, God, the mother, she's an elderly Korean woman who's still well, who we're told is still living today. So it's, it's, you know, a bit of information control there too. Totally. Right. Which, yeah, yeah. An esoteric gap, you know, mm. often where you don't get to find out the real teachings, you know, until you're in there for a while. And it's like, I missed, you know, I wasn't around uh, earlier. I'd love to have joined you guys earlier. And I kind of know a little bit of your talk and you know, contrasting Christianity with new religious movements and cults. But I mean, you know, that's the big difference in Christianity. You're going to find out one oh one, you know, day one pretty much everything Christianity believes. We're not going to tell you, well, you, you'll find out all will be revealed. Or you're not ready for that. Or, you know, uh, right. you know we'll, we'll do that later. You know, I mean, there's right. there's different things. You know, Kelsey has gone over this many times, how, um, you know, pe certain people are entitled to go to certain meetings. You know, you don't get certain books right away, certain truths. This comes right out of the Seventh-day Adventists. Um, and Seventh-day Adventists that often recruit with prophecy seminars and there's a lot of DNA right in the Church of God from the Seventh-day Adventists. I mean, a lot of the doctrines, but also the methodologies that people don't talk about. That's a very mm -hmm. big thing with Seventh-day Adventists, too. They don't, don't come out and tell you right away, Ellen G. White is God's prophet, the third angel. They kind of wait a long time to tell you that. They get you interested in these prophecy seminars for like 25 days. And you're coming and, you know, studying all the stuff with them. They're telling all their funky doctrines. And then they start getting into the Sabbath and everything. And then finally, oh, yeah, by the way... Um, you know, in the United States, we had a, a modern prophet show up, Ellen G. White, and she taught that, you know, if you go to church on Sunday, you have the mark of the beast. They don't come out and teach you that right away. They kind of, you know, wean you when you're ready to hear that kind of stuff. So right. I think that's, that's a huge difference between, you know, Christianity or normal religions and some of these controversial new groups.